We're going to take a look at this shot as our example, uh, which heavily uses paint and stick to texture the scene. So this is a completed shot. This is the shot without paint and stick applied. This isn't what it looks like uh, rendering out of Cinema 4D. There was a lot of compositing and After Effects, uh, but this is everything minus paint and stick's contribution. And this shows everything that paint and stick contributed. Here's the scene in Cinema 4D. We're not going to get into animating, but we'll just touch on the render setup. To set up the paint and stick pass, just go to Plugins, Paint and Stick Auto Setup. This adds paint and stick tags to your scene, and it also adds paint and stick to your multi pass. Keep in mind that the auto setup is going to set your format to OpenEXR 32 bit as a single layer file. If you don't want that to happen, then don't use the auto setup button. Instead, just use the step one button and then you can set the save settings yourself. So now I'm just going to render a frame. Here's the render. And in After Effects, we'll be using a variety of passes to composite. And of course, here's the sticky pass. And here's the sticky ID pass. The first thing you're going to do is just bring in all your footage and put it in some sort of footage folder to stay organized. Uh, but before you even start compositing in any way, go in here and make sure that you chose a working space. For me, I just chose Apple RGB and set it to linear. The reason is that we're working with Octane and it kicks out all of its passes linear, uh, as does the uh, Cinema 4D physical renderer, and your composite's just going to look better when you do that. Set your depth to 32-bit and uh, you'll be good. For the record, Paint and Stick actually works when you're in 8-bit mode, however I like to work in 32-bit because uh, post depth of field looks way better and uh, color correction is a lot easier with a lot more latitude. To get started, drag your diffuse down into a new comp. After that, because of the way Octane works, it doesn't really matter so much what order they're in because they're all going to be set to an add transfer mode. Uh, so I'm just going to put these down in no particular order. However, I do prefer a uh, reflection over the top usually for reasons which we'll get into later. And I prefer my diffuse down at the bottom. Right away, that's not looking too bad. And then take your paint and stick passes and put these underneath everything. So here they are. And shut them off. If you're new to compositing, everyone has their own little workflows, and whenever I have something that's supposed to be in the comp and turned off, but you can't delete it, I just quickly change its color to red. When I look at this shot, the windshield doesn't have a lot of detail on it. Uh, there was no texture when this was rendered out of Cinema 4D. So the first thing we're going to do is put some detail in here. First, we need to take the reflection pass, uh, this the reflection direct, and reflection indirect and we're going to pre-compose those together. Then before we even touch paint and stick, let's get a texture in there to affect the look. So I'm going to bring in this grimy glass texture. I'm going to set the transfer mode to overlay, and I'm going to grab a power pin effect. And try to match the perspective of the windshield the best I can. It's grime, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, it should be close. That looks pretty good. Then I'm going to put some curves on this. Brighten that up quite a bit. I'll make a new solid. Make it invisible. And then I'm just going to quickly trace around where this windshield is. I'm noticing this edge is off. I'm just going to extend that a little bit. And I'm going to set this to alpha mat. And now that's within this mat. And maybe I'll just make a few little adjustments here. And put a little feather on this. That looks pretty good. Now I want to stick this to the car. So there's one thing that's really important to notice. I'm going to put a marker here on frame uh, 78 where I'm sticking this, is that if I move off of this frame, then obviously this isn't going to line up anymore. And it can be very valuable to remember which frame that you are sticking from. That way, if you have to make any changes, say, for example, if you were going to paint anything else on here, you would know which frame to go back to. So I have a method that I use that I think works really well. I'll select all the layers that are associated with that stick. 
I'll pre-compose them together. And then I'm going to trim it to just be on the frame that I'm going to project from. I'm going to set this layer to red, which is uh, a little workflow thing that I do for myself, so I know the layer has to be off, but it's still going to be useful, so don't delete it. And now I'm going to use paint and stick to stick this down. So I make a new solid. And for organization, I'm going to match the name, apply paint and stick, and then bring in the sticky pass and the ID pass. And I'm going to shut both of these off because you don't actually need to see them. And uh, again, I'm going to label them as red. That's my own personal way of saying it needs to be in the comp because we're going to reference them using the effect. Sticky ID to sticky ID, and uh, sticky pass to sticky pass. However, they're not supposed to be visible because that's just going to slow things down. I'll also make this a different color. So anyway, to put this windshield texture in Paint and Stick, first solo the uh, windshield texture, then select the instance of Paint and Stick you want to copy it to, hold down Shift, and click. Now you notice that when I turn off this windshield texture, it still shows up because it's been screen captured to Paint and Stick. Then I just have to match the transfer mode we were using. We were using overlay. And now it looks exactly the same as it did. And then to stick that down, I just have to click this button, the stick button. Now would be a good time to go back to my main comp. Remember to set the reflection back to add. That way it uh, composites with the rest of the scene. And play it back to see how it looks. So this is what it looks like. It's looking pretty good. Um, I think that uh, I might want to make a little change. Uh, so maybe I would have some of this grime coming up a little bit higher on the windshield. Looks a little bit clean up there for my liking. So to make this change, I'm just going to go back into the reflection comp. And uh, remember, I have this saved for a reason right here. So I'm just going to take this paint and stick layer and I'm going to delete the glue. Not even going to worry about it. And I'm going to go back into this comp. So if I want to extend some of this grime up the windshield, I'm just going to make a new solid. And I'll apply paint and stick. I'm going to choose a soft brush because I want to clone stamp. And I'll turn my alpha value down to 5% so it's uh, a little bit easier to make this subtle. Then I'm going to hold down Option and Shift. And that's going to start the clone stamp. Just put a little bit up there. And I think that'll look a little bit better. So then I'm just going to switch these layers around a little bit. I'm going to turn off the mat here. And uh, this was the mask layer that I was using. I'll put this over the top. And I'll set this to, I believe it's Silhouette Alpha. It might be Stencil Alpha. Okay, yeah, it's uh, Stencil Alpha. So now these two are uh, both contained underneath that. So then I can come back to here and I'll uh, solo this again, select my paint and stick layer, hold down shift, click, and then uh, I can hide this again, not deleting it and uh, making sure that it's still on one frame. That way it's easy to come back to. And I'll press glue. So now that change has been made and um, it was pretty quick and painless and it looks a lot better. So there we have it. Uh, this whole process took about, you know, five minutes to do, and it was pretty easy. If we had to alter this texture back in Cinema 4D, yeah, maybe it wouldn't be too difficult to do just to apply this grime texture to the windshield, but the problem is then you would have to re-render. This shot took six hours to render on my laptop, so we actually saved a lot of time just doing it in paint and stick. And it was also pretty easy because we could dial in the exact color correction we wanted and know exactly how it would look in context of the final composite. The next thing we're going to take a look at is how to put a logo onto this cardboard box. I'll go into my diffuse pass, all the way down to the original pass, and I could stick on this logo layer. But you're going to notice it doesn't look too good with the normal transfer mode. It's not blending in, it doesn't appear to be lit by the scene. So your first instinct may be to use the multiply transfer mode. However, there's going to be a challenge with this too, because now it's way too dark. Let me just duplicate over my layer and put it over on the right side for comparison. 
A lot of clients need their logo colors to stay completely on brand, so something like this wouldn't be acceptable, and color correcting it back could be more difficult than it needs to be. We also have the issue where when we multiply this logo over the top, we're seeing the paint underneath. So we're going to do this in two steps, and the first is to remove the tape. First, I'm going to hide these logos, and I'm going to very quickly get rid of this tape. There are a lot of ways to do this, so I'll try to show you one you may not have seen. Make a new adjustment layer, and on that layer, under Effect, Keying, choose Simple Wire Removal, move point A to the left, and point B to the right. And what this does is it finds a line between point A and B, and it takes what's above and below and blends it towards the middle to remove what's in the middle. So I'll just turn up the thickness, and it's a very easy way to blend between the top and the bottom. Now I'll make a new adjustment layer to take care of the seam. I'll create a fast blur and set it to vertical because it's mostly vertical. And I'll blur it just enough to blend that seam. And then I'll loosely mat that adjustment layer. And last, because I'm losing a little bit of texture here, I'm going to take the diffuse pass and duplicate it over twice. I'll pre-compose it into a new comp and enter the new comp. Then in here, I can extract some texture. So I'll take the top layer, set it to 50% opacity, and I'll blur the layer. And I'll also invert it. So what this does is it brings out the texture in any flat areas so you can overlay it over your scene to apply that texture. So now I'll take this textured area from the left box and I'm going to slide it over to the top of the right box because this is the texture that I want to place down on the right box. And I'll set the transfer mode to overlay. So let's see that off and on. It helps a bit, but I'm going to up the contrast to make it a little more prominent. There, I think that's definitely looking a lot better. So the reason we're making this clean cardboard is so the area where the logo is, we're not seeing the tape. So we have to mat it using the logo. Here's the logo. And instead of multiply, I'll choose stencil alpha. So now this cardboard is matted directly underneath where the logo will be. I'll make a new solid. And I'll apply a paint and stick. This is the layer I'm going to use to stick the cardboard down. I'll of course source my sticky pass and my ID pass where they need to be sourced. I'll hold shift and click to screen capture to make this paint part of the paint and stick layer. Then I'll press the stick button. Now I'm just going to hide these layers that I used to make this image, but I won't delete them. I'll trim them to the first frame and I'm going to set them to red, which is a color that I personally use when I want something to be in the comp, but be off. I'll also take my paint and stick layer and set it to yellow, and I'll unsolo everything. And I'll also turn this logo layer back to multiply, because I want to actually see it, and I'll bring it back up over the top. Okay, so if we take a look here, we've successfully removed the tape, and it was pretty easy. And this is so when we place the logo over the top, it looks like it's above the tape while receiving texture from the cardboard. Let's just play that back. So there it is, it's working well. So I'll just relabel this cardboard, and I'll put this directly over my diffuse pass. So next, how do we multiply this logo over the cardboard, but get it to match the original branding colors? So the way to think about this is if we're using the transfer mode multiply, the opposite of that is divide. So we can take the background that we're multiplying onto, and we can divide the logo by that color. And that will allow us to get the general same results as the logo's original colors. So I'll make a new solid, and it will be the color of this area that we're multiplying over the top of. And I'll pre-compose this solid with my logo. I'll call this divided logo. Inside this comp, I'll put the solid over the top and set the transfer mode to divide. And I'll click this button, preserve underlying transparency, that way we're keeping the alpha of the logo. So I'll move back into my diffuse comp, and uh, right now this looks crazy, it looks a little bit neon and glowing. However, when I set the transfer mode to multiply, notice how extremely similar the colors are to the original logo. I'm just going to take the original logo and drag it over so you can see it close up. So we're very similar with the colors, except we're taking the shading with the scene so it looks a lot more realistic. So now I can just delete the original logo. The only other touch I might put on here is I might soften this a little bit with a fast blur. Probably keep it subtle, 0.5 pixels will be good. 
And now I want to stick this logo down too. So I already have a paint and stick solid, so I'm just going to duplicate this over. So now I'll just solo it so you can see what's on it. And I'm going to delete the stuck paint and the frame paint, just so everything's clear. And I'll relabel this layer logo. Now I'll solo my divided logo layer, and I'm going to trim it to the first frame because this is the frame we're sticking from. I'll select my paint and stick layer, and of course I have to have the logo soloed so the screen capture will work. I'll hold shift and click. Now this paint has been captured to my paint and stick layer, and with paint and stick selected, I'll press the stick button. Playing this forward, I'll just confirm that it's sticking. I'll turn back on the visibility of the diffuse pass and the paint and stick layer. And the last thing I have to do is set the transfer mode for the paint and stick layer to multiply. Now when I play this back, the logo is stuck. The colors look extremely similar to the original, except there's a little shading and the tape is gone. Next up, we're going to take a look at these render errors and how to fix those. Here's a shot where everything is looking pretty good, except up here in the top right corner, we have some render errors. You'll notice there are some dark spots here and uh, some lines here breaking up the bricks. And it's also repeated, so it could just use a little bit of variation. Using paint and stick, I can uh, take out these dark spots pretty easily, clone stamping. And I can also clone stamp out these lines. Here's my new texture, let's see it on and off. And now I'm just going to glue this down. Here's the shot now, looking a lot better. And here's the shot played back with depth of field and color correction turned back on. This shot took six hours to render. If we were gonna fix this in Cinema 4D, it would have taken us about six hours. But to make this little fix in Paint and Stick took just a couple of minutes.